is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. Awesome. So we'll start. Um, so uh, I'm Shannon Strader. I'm currently the chief uh, and I'm a PGY4. I'm heading um, to Mayo Clinic after this year for a fellowship in cell and gene therapy. So um, I've enjoyed my time here at University of Louisville and we have great things to offer. So Fraser Rehab Institute has uh, some interesting history. It is probably one of the tallest buildings downtown, especially in the healthcare system, which makes it even cooler that we can say we are housed there. Um, it was originally opened in 1951 and in 84, the name was changed. Um, Melia was the founder of Fraser Rehab. She was in a car accident. She came from a very wealthy family and ended up doing rehab, I believe, in Ohio and came back to her hometown in Louisville and, and decided to, to open up a, a rehabilitation center. So that's how we started. In a year, we treat around uh, 500 stroke patients, 350 brain injury, and 200 spinal cord injury. We also treat pediatrics, and we have a very robust pediatric program. On a given week, we usually have at least 10 inpatient. And most of our floors are inpatient. Seven through 11 is kind of where we're housed inpatient, and then the other floors are um, outpatient and uh, therapy. Uh, units. So we rotate um, with all the different hospitals and systems, especially downtown, but also at the VA. So these are all our kind of buildings. Uh, we're not limited to all these buildings. We have much more buildings as well. Um, but most of them are within walking distance of Fraser Rehab. So that's kind of nice that we're you're usually not having to drive too far. And if you are, it's 10 miles from Fraser, if that. Um, and so we rotate uh, at Norton Children's um, University Hospital, which is undergoing a remodel currently, which is down the street. Brownsboro is brand new. It just opened yesterday. It's beautiful. VA Hospital, and then of course, Fraser. We have many rotations, your basic um, rehab rotations, spinal cord, TBI, stroke, medically complex, where we have transplant patients, bad patients, um, very complex. And then uh, pediatric rehab, which is somewhat unusual in rehab currently uh, with inpatient. We have fairly robust, uh, like I said earlier, um, peds. And then orthopedics, uh, community-based rehab, PNO, sports med, EMG, cancer, palliative, neuro rehab, MSK clinics, and sports medicine. Plenty of pain as well. <laughs> um, and then we do have a resident continuity clinic and it's every Monday, one to five. We staff our cases with attendings. Um, there's quite a bit of autonomy in this resident clinic. You learn a lot. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for procedures and EMGs and ultrasounds. For resident didactics, we have town halls Mondays, noon to one, and sometimes lectures as well, depending on faculty availability. Wednesdays, we just kind of switched around and eliminated our noon to one. So uh, we're um, having less time in didactics now, which I think is, is good. We get to the core uh, lectures that we need. So 115 to 215 and 230 to 430. We have lectures mostly taught by faculty during this time. Fridays, Grand Rounds, Journal Clubs, and M&Ms, we switch off every Friday. We do have ultrasound workshops. Last year it was um, 
almost every month. Uh, this year, we're actually going to have an entire MSK block in the spring. Uh, we do plenty of Botox and plenty of baclofen workshops and baclofen refills as well. And then, of course, therapy and resources and following therapists around. So our grand rounds are twice a month. PGY3s and PGY4s are expected to present one grand round in a year. Um, journal clubs are monthly. Usually each resident presents once a year. Um, and then m, m ms are quarterly, and that's usually only PGY2s who present. And then you do have opportunities to um, participate in house staff, morbidity, mortality committees that are overarching the entire university. And then our exams, we do have SAEs, uh, so self-assessment exams. Uh, the normal PM&R SAEs take place in January. We also do EMG SAEs in May. And we have a mock oral exam with faculty and alumni in March, which is really helpful in preparation for boards. Conferences, we, we participate in a wide range of conferences. We all kind of have different passions. I'm mostly paying currently, um, but a lot of different representation. We do encourage that at least once a year, each of us participate either in AAPMNR or AAP. AAPMNR being more clinical based, AAP sometimes more research based. And then a uh, board review course for PGY4s are included in this time off as well, and usually paid for from uh, admin to participate. And then other conferences attended by our residents are include most pain conferences, sports medicine conferences, ped pediatrics and developmental medicine as well. And then um, I'll switch it over to Shelby here. If she's available. <laughs> If not, I'll continue. Um, and so call coverage is shared between all the residents and we've actually improved Sorry, this Janet. quite a bit. Um, PGY2s take the bulk of the call, but it, this is improved consistently each year. Um, we started off when I was at PGY1 at 11 weeks and now PGY2s take 6.5 weeks, so much a better difference. And then PGY3s take 4.5 and PGY4s take three weeks. How we do it is weekday call, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, this is home call and um, it's only two nights during the week. And if you're on call during the weekend, it's three. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And this is in house in the morning when you're rounding on each patient Saturday and Sunday and then um, you can go home and, and take call from home. Uh, and then holidays are divided evenly between PGY2s, threes and fours should not be taking holiday call and emissions after hours are done remotely via phone and laptop. Mood lighting, we have a lot of moonlighters, especially in the past, and this is permitted by the PD. Um, Common at other programs must have taken and scored higher than the 20th percentile on AAP and our SAE. And examples are cosmetic Botox, urgent care, disability clinics, and occupational. For uh, events, um, we're actually kind of revamping it this year. We have a lot of community outreach programs. We're working with uh, cancer support groups and giving lectures and Q and A's to um, the patients and their caregivers. Uh, we're, we're calling it Lunch and Learns uh, starting this year quarterly. And then we do participate in MedFest Special Olympics. It's a one day event and it's amazing. We do also participate in football coverage um, almost every Friday in the fall. Uh, we kind of divide it, especially based on interest. And then uh, there's opportunities for marathon, 5K coverage, and other sports coverage through the Sports Med Fellowship Program. Lead time Thanks, 20. Janet. Sorry, did I fix oh. it? Yes, you got it. All okay. right. Well, I'll have my Shelly bad. Take over. This is what I get for having three mute buttons on my headset. But um, sorry, guys. So, leave time for our program is 
change this year as well. It's been really cool. We get 12 PTO days per academic year, and then they're giving us five conference days um, to go to AAP and R. AAP is what's encouraged. Um, AAP and R being more biased towards the threes and the fours, and then AAP um, towards the twos. And then if you're presenting, you can go to any other conference. Um, typically, this is completely paid for by our educational budget. So I went to AAP last year and it was totally paid for, which was awesome. Um, there's also a new thing that Shannon really advocated for this year, which is this quarterly half day that's a wellness day. So if we plan in advance, we can plan some appointments. And you know, if we just feel like we need a half day off, then we can get this built in and approved. And it's not a PTO day. It's not a sick day. Um, you, it's just a free half day for you to do whatever makes you well. And then another thing that's been added is that for PGY4s, um, you get three free interview days per year as well. And this is something that um, when you have an assigned lecture or you're assigned to call or you're assigned to game coverage and you realize that you have a conflict, we're all really flexible. We support each other and we trade call and lecture dates all the time. And sorry, Shani, I'll have to say next slide every time. Um, so I mentioned the stipend. So we get an $1,800 annual stipend for conferences, travel, and books. Um, and this can typically, it covered a flight, hotel, and AAP for me last year, as well as some books. Um, there's also a board review course that's sponsored by the department for all the PGY4s that they do in February or March. And then they also pay for memberships to AAP, MNR, AAP. They give us the AAP, MNR question bank. Kind of a cool thing that came back last year is that we do get to park in the physician parking at Jewish, which is right across the street from the hospital. So you never have to walk very far. And it's a nice feeling being able to finally park in physician parking. Um, so it's a nice mental perk, I think, as well as just a convenient thing to the hospital. And then we get two lab coats, I think per year, um, but I didn't re-up on that. And my animals are fighting, I'm so sorry. Um, next slide. So these are three of our former graduates. They were PGY4s two years ago. And so we currently have a 100% written board pass rate for the last seven years and then 81% for oral boards. Um, one thing that we're working on for oral boards is we do have mock orals every March with our PD, Dr. Kalen, and then Dr. Kubinek has also stepped up into this scene and we're practicing more and more. Um, and then we're kind of full of subspecialists. So uh, 20 of the last 30 graduates have gone on to some kind of a fellowship that's sports, sports and spine, pediatrics, spinal cord injury, pain, and then Shannon with our first cell therapy fellowship. Um, our faculty and attendings, we interact with everyone in our department. We have sort of a small department, um, but then we also interact frequently with the neurosurgery attendings. We have an ortho rotation that's two weeks that uh, we were with Dr. Mast, and then anesthesiology with our pain, neurology and movement disorders clinic, which is part of our resident clinic months, and then podiatry, palliative care, and geriatrics. All of these attendings are super welcoming for all of our residents. I don't think that we've had any, if there have been any bad uh, experiences, I haven't heard about them yet. So, and I personally loved my palliative and geriatrics rotations. Um, we have VA physicians that oversee us as well. The department just recently expanded. So there's a new spinal cord injury attending coming in full time, I think in September. Dr. Miller just started full-time with um, another new full-timer and uh, Dr. Racine who came to us from NYU last year. And then there's a ton of community physicians that we interact with that are specialists at, uh, while we're inpatient at Fraser, who are very nice as well. And then all of our therapists are superstars. And then this is just kind of a look at all of us. We are all friends. We go out together. We say work hard, play hard, which I think is true. Um, we all have a resident retreat, I think now in three weeks, and we hang out for like 
Friendsgiving and Thanksgiving and random other stuff. So I think it's a good vibe here as well. Thank you for having us. I don't know if there's time if, if anybody has questions. Okay. I guess we have a couple minutes. So all right. Well, last call. No, no questions. Sounds good. Well, thank you for having us, Zach. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate you being here. IMGs are accepted. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Shannon.